friends and guests, Happy New Year and welcome to our worship service. You are in for a great experience today. While we continue to worship online, we want, we want you to know that we are praying for each of you. Next, let's connect. There are a few ways to do it, like our Facebook page at St. Paul UMC Dallas and on our YouTube channel. Click like, share, and comment during today's worship. Now let's get into worship and we'll see you in the comments. Good morning, St. Paul, and a special hello to our guests and friends. Here's news and information you can use for this week that can help you get connected and grow right here at St. Paul. Ladies, join us each Sunday morning at 9.15 a.m. as we commit to the 28-day prayer journey. This study is for anyone longing for a consistent prayer life. Don't come along. Share your Zoom information with a friend or family member. The men are studying calling in the New Testament. Please join in every Sunday morning for a dynamic time of studying God's Word. That's Sundays at 9.15 a.m. on Zoom. We've always perceived ourselves as people of freedom. Freedom of equality, of human decency of the right to live without fear. These freedoms have been given to us by many who sacrificed greatly. And somehow, we've believed that the war has been won, that we have arrived. But if we open our eyes, we can see that the dream has not yet been fully realized. But there are still battles to fight. Still inequalities present. Still souls suffering. That our faith demands more than awareness and that no generation is exempt from these battles. But we are held responsible to stand, to do justly, to love mercy, and to serve the least of these. As we embark upon the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., let's remember his quote that states, life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you going to do for others? Each year, St. Paul provides a service opportunity and this year is no different. The Mills on Wheels are looking for volunteers to deliver food. This is a socially distanced way to serve those in our community who will go without food to eat without these deliveries. So please sign up to serve today. This is a great opportunity for you and your family to serve others. To sign up, visit volunteer.vnatexas.org backslash landing. To learn more about the happenings of St. Paul, please visit our website at www.spumcd.com. Thank you for your attention and have a blessed week. Friends, I know you are aware of all of the issues and the problems and the chaos that's going on in our world right now that's been happening in Washington, D.C. And I just want to take a moment to, first of all, just acknowledge the hurt and the pain and the anger and the frustration that, that many of us feel for many reasons. I, I must confess I went through my own emotional turmoil and, and really didn't know how to respond. And I, and I think we'll be learning and growing in that response as the days uh, come. But one of the things I just wanted to say to us this morning is that we have to remember who we are in the midst of all of this, that we are the people of God and that God calls us, first of all, to prayer because prayer grounds us and helps us to know uh, how to respond. Prayer keeps us from operating in our flesh. Uh, prayer grounds us. And so I want to encourage us to be in prayer for our nation. Um, and then we need to be present. 
We need to be present. We need to be present with those who need our presence. We need to, to you know, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. There's still so much going on, but we need to have a presence as the people of God, as God's church, to say we are here, we are, we are the light in the midst of darkness and chaos, and we stand for justice, and we stand for righteousness, and we stand for the truth. And so where God has called us to speak prophetically, to speak truth to power, we need to do those things. Always mindful of who we are, but, but friends, I think part of the reason we are in this is because good people have been way too silent for way too long. And those of us who claim to be Christians have the responsibility of speaking up and of speaking the truth. And so I want to just encourage us to be the people of God, to pray, to be present, to be prophetic, because God has called us to be powerful. And we wrap all of that in the love of God, because this world needs to see God's glory, see God revealed, see God's love, see God's justice. So I want to take a moment to pray uh, for your heart, to encourage you, um, to encourage you to reach out. I know some of us have been saying stuff on Facebook. I've said a few things I probably need to take back. But, uh, but let's be mindful of our words, um, even as we speak the truth. Let's be mindful of, of who we are. So let's pray. God, thank you so much that you are an ever-present God. Lord, that you don't ordain or cause chaos, Lord, but you call us to speak to it, to speak life and to speak order and to speak truth and to speak hope. We are not a hopeless people. You have moved in wonderful and powerful ways and you are still moving. So we pray, God, for our leaders to stand up and do what is right. We pray, God, that we are the people of God who will light the way. Help us to not be silent, Lord. Uh, help us to be uh, powerful, prophetic voices of truth and justice and love, because this is who you've called us to be. And this is who you empower us to be through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. it is now time to worship the Lord in the giving of our gifts. God is such a great and generous God and invites us to be generous as well. Would you go to spumcd.com and select one of the ways that you can worship the Lord in offering your gifts. God bless you today as you give.
shackles, no more chains, no more bondage, I am free, yeah. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage, I am No more chains, no more bondage, I am free. Hallelujah, 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 I'm free. Our God, O oh God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. We bless you on today, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Lord, you have done so much for us and we are eternally grateful. Lord, we may not do everything we're supposed to do, Lord, but by your grace and your mercy, Lord, you continue to bless us, Lord, even when we don't deserve it. Lord, we are asking you, Lord, to look upon these United States of America. Father God, continue to be with us. Help us, Lord God, to become back into the uh, order and decency, Lord God. Lord, that we may seek your face, Lord God, and not do the things of man, but do the things according to your word and your way and your will. Lord, we'll be eternally grateful, Lord God, that you would just keep us just keep us, Lord, as we get through this pandemic. And we pray, Lord God, that this will soon be over. Nevertheless, it is not our will, but thy will that we pray is done. These and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture reading will be coming from Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 31. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. This is the word of God for the people of God. And the people of God said, Thanks be to God. The splendor of a king Closed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All 
the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God Age to age he stands And time is in his hands Beginning and the end the end the God had three in one Father, Spirit and Son the Lion and the Lamb the Lion and the Lamb how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Above all names, worthy of our praise, and my heart will sing how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of our praise. How great is our God How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how great How great How great How great How great is our God! Friends, let's pray and prepare ourselves to see what the Lord has to say to us uh, in the Word this morning. God of grace and God of glory, how we thank you for this day that you have blessed us to see. And God, we come this day needing you to speak to our hearts needing you to strengthen us and bless us, needing you to guide us and lead us. And we thank you because you have been faithful before and we know and believe that you'll be faithful again. But may your Holy Spirit be our teacher, our counselor, our wisdom and our guide. Strengthen us in this moment, in our inner being with power through your spirit. And we will give you all the glory and the honor and praise in your anointing, O oh God, not only in this place, but in every home and in every heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, today we start a new sermon series called All In, Loving God with, loving God with Heart, Mind, Soul, and Strength. And today's subject is Loving God with All My Heart. Because as Christians, we say we love God, but I want to unpack what we mean when we talk about that. Do we truly love God? You know, if we were to take a survey uh, and ask people, ask Christians, what is the most important thing for a Christian to do? More than likely, we would get a lot of different answers. Some would respond that the most important thing is studying the Bible. Someone else might respond and say the most important thing is prayer. Someone else might say it's service or following the leading of the Holy Spirit. 
Well, Jesus was asked this very question, and his response was a bit different. From the perspective of Jesus, that which is most vital to the Christian faith is love that is directed to God. It's loving God. You know, in poker, so I've been told, uh -huh, the phrase all in means that a player has put the last of their chips into the pot, that they are uh, sure about the hand that they have and they're betting everything on it. They are all in. It is no holding back, no holes barred. So I'm told, amen somebody. But as Christians, we are to be that, have that same mentality that we are all in, that we are people who are fully committed, that we are called, if you will, to put all of our chips on the table as we give every aspect of ourselves to God because we are all in. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today from Mark chapter 12, where Jesus declares the importance of this all in lifestyle. Verses 28 through 31 say, one of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. <clears throat> and seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. <clears throat> in this passage, Jesus has just been asked by a scribe which commandment was first. Which commandment was the one they needed to pay the most attention to? What was most important? Because you see, Jesus has been in a conversation which was really more of a debate with the Sadducees, a, religious, a, a Jewish religious sect, along with the Pharisees, who struggled to understand Jesus is teaching. They struggled to understand the things that Jesus did, and they often engaged him in debate, and, 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 and it was often contentious because they had issues with what Jesus did and who Jesus was. And isn't it interesting that sometimes the religious establishment, uh -huh, the church folk, if you will, uh -huh, are, are very religious but have issues with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so this scribe overhears the conversation and the debate that Jesus has been engaged in. And he is impressed by the responses that Jesus gives. And the text says that seeing that he answered them well, he asked Jesus this question, which commandment is the greatest? Now you need to understand this is not a random question. It was common in that day to ask a religious leader a question to get at the core of their philosophy or their teaching. And so the question is raised because this scribe wants to know, Jesus, what are you really all about? And Jesus answers, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. He prefaces his response with the words of the Shema. Now, the Shema is a Jewish prayer and is based on Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 9. The Shema has been recited daily at morning and even, evening Jewish prayer services for thousands of years and is considered the most important part of the prayer service in Judaism. It's traditional for Jews to say the Shema as their last words, and parents teach their children to say it before they go to sleep. And the Shema declares that there is only one God. Sometimes it's translated, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And in a polytheistic world, in a time when they were worshiping many gods, when that was normal, the people of Israel stood out because they declared their faith in one God. And they declared that that one God was God. The Lord is one. There is only one God. And, you know, as I thought about this, I realized that Jesus wasn't giving this scribe new information. He's not telling him something he doesn't already know. If this prayer is recited twice a day and it's so important, this scribe is well aware of the Shema. This was not new information. You know, and it's sometimes, friends, it's not that we need new information. We need to internalize the information that we already have. Sometimes it's not that we need a new word. We need a now word. We need a word that speaks to us now. We need a word that heals us now. We need a word that transforms us now. We need a word that frees us now. We need a word that speaks to this situation in our country now. And sometimes we need to be challenged to live what we believe and we need a wake up call because we are the people who believe in the one God, that there is one God. 
And I think the reminder is necessary because even today, there are still many gods with a little g. There are still many gods. There are other gods that clamor for our attention. There are gods that clamor for our allegiance. I'm not talking about gods carved out of stone. I'm talking about gods of selfishness, gods of of self-centeredness, gods of political affiliations, uh gods of people, gods of materials, gods of pride, gods of greed and selfishness. Let me ask you today, who is your God? Who or what is your God? What is your God's name? Because whatever it is, it has our primary allegiance that has first claim on our affections. It is what we have allowed to become our God. And I believe that is why we are seeing so much some of the the issues and the problems today is because people have allowed other people, other leaders, uh, other things, uh, other other circumstances, other uh, associations, other political parties to become their God. Yet. The first commandment given in the Old Testament found in Exodus 20, verse 3, it says, you must not have any other God but me. And Jesus reminds this scribe of what he already knows, but perhaps needs to remember that there is one God and God alone claims priority over our hearts. You see, if God claims priority over our hearts, then God claims priority over what we do. He reminds him, you shall love the Lord with all your heart. It's loving God, Jesus says, that matters more than any other commandment. We are to love God first and most of all with all of our heart. The the you in this text is singular. It is about you and God. Who do you say God is? You are to love God with all your heart. The Greek word for heart in Mark 12 is cardia. Now, cardia means the center and seat of spiritual life. It means passions and appetites and affections and purpose. However, since Jesus refers to the Shema in this text, we also need to look at the Hebrew word for heart. And the Hebrew word for heart is lev, L-E-V, lev. Lev deals with the inner, middle, the central, the core of the person. It can also mean mind or will. See, We see here that the term for heart, friends, is multifaceted in scripture. The heart deals with the will, the affections, the the patterns of feeling and deep thought. And so we are to love God with all of that. We are to love God with our very essence, with our passions, with our appetites, with our affections, with our emotions, with our inner person, with our will. Oh my God, that sounds exhausting, but we are supposed to love God with all that we have. Hmm? It means that God claims and God has and God owns first dibs on our hearts. I don't care how much you love boo, boo has to be number two. Amen, somebody. Loving God with all our heart, friends, can be challenging, though. It it calls for a lot, and it's challenging because the heart has issues. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? The NIV says the heart is beyond cure. The message said it is hopelessly dark and deceitful. Oh my goodness, it sounds like we are messed up. You know, sometimes, friends, the challenge is the condition of our hearts. We are a tangled mess of mixed motives and hidden agendas and deep-seated fears. The heart is challenging. There are all kinds of stuff going on in the hearts of people. Mm-hmm. And, and friend, people, people, people don't change. Until, we don't change until our hearts change. But even if it's a problem, even if our hearts are problematic, the heart is central. It is crucial to loving God. And Jesus said the first commandment is to love God with all your heart. So how do we do this with messed up hearts? First of all, friends, we have to surrender our hearts to God. Surrender your heart to God. We offer God our hearts. Uh, and the word surrender means just that. It means, you know, when you're watching, if you, if you like Westerns, I have a, a, a good friend that loves Westerns, all those old things like Bonanza and Gunsmoke, all that stuff. And so when, when, they, when, they, when they say, come out with your hands up, right, that's a sign of surrender. Hmm? And, and friends, that's what we do in worship. And that's why we lift our hands in worship. Yes, it's to tell God thank you and to tell God praise, but it's also to say, I, I give up. <laughs> it's to say, I surrender. Huh? Like the song says, I surrender 
all, when we surrender our hearts, we give up. We give our hearts up to Lord, up to the Lord. And even if it's a broken heart, we say, God, I surrender this broken heart. I need you to take, take this broken heart and do something with it. If it's an angry heart, we say, God, I surrender my angry heart. I, I'm as mad as a hornet's nest. Take this heart and do something with me. If it's a frustrated heart, God, I'm frustrated with my spouse. I'm about to kill him. Take this heart and do something with my frustrated heart. God, it's yours. God, I'm so stressed. Take my stressed out heart. It's yours. Hmm? Because as angry and stressed and frustrated and upset as we may be, mm -hmm, I know that you and you alone are God. You know, friends, love is not always pretty, is it? I'm so grateful that we serve a God where we don't have to dress it up and masquerade like it's all good, right? Love is not always pretty, but love is powerful. And God loves us so much that we don't have to pretend that our hearts are not issues. We don't have issues with our heart. God can deal with the issues of our heart. And friends, when you love someone, you can be honest with them. Hmm? And I think if we would get honest with God, we would have a closer walk with God. Psalm 28, 7 says, The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me. My heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. To love God with all my heart, with all of our hearts, means surrender. And friends, the second thing I want to share with you today is, is that surrender means we allow God to search our hearts. We must allow God to search us. To search means we allow God to do a work in us. Once we surrender and let it go, then we say, all right, come on in here and clean house, God. Come on in here and do something with this heart. Jeremiah 17, 10 says, I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart. God says, I'm going to go through your heart. I'm going to go through the rooms of your heart, through that room that has rebellion in it, through that room that has hatred in it, through that room that has unforgiveness and resentment in it. Let me go through and search out all the issues in your heart so I can work on your heart and change your heart because love changes us. Psalm 139 says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me, God, in the way that is everlasting. I love what the New Living Translation says. It says, point out anything in me that offends you. Point out anything in me that is not like you. Point out anything in me that needs to be changed. God, deal with me. Show me the stuff that I need to deal with. You know, this conversation that Jesus is having here in Mark 12 is part of an ongoing debate with the Sadducees. And the Sadducees had opposed Jesus ever since his arrival in Jerusalem. Hmm? They had opposed Jesus and the words that he said and, and how he, he spoke and how he, he ministered to people and how he, he dealt with their hearts. Hmm? Uh, uh, friends, and, and here's, here's what I think is really important. When we hear God's word, we have two options. We can allow God's word to penetrate our hearts, or we hear God's word and we harden our hearts. Mm -hmm. There are two things we can do. We can, we can allow God's word to soften our hearts, or we can allow God's word to harden our hearts. That's what Pharaoh did when Moses was giving him the word to let God's people go. The, the text in Exodus says over and over again, and Pharaoh hardened his heart. Hebrews 3 says, today, 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 if you hear God's voice, do not harden your hearts. Ephesians 4 talks about being darkened and understanding and alienated from the life of God because of a hardened heart. Because a hardened heart will resist the will of God. A hardened heart will, will resist the move of the Holy Spirit. A hardened heart refuses to change. A hardened heart is unresponsive to God's spirit. That's why Proverbs 4 tells us to guard our hearts above all else because it determines the course of our lives. And friends, I get it. Sometimes our hearts are hardened because we've been hurt by life, hurt by circumstances, and sometimes we even feel like God has let us down. But let me tell you something. Even if we feel that God has let us down, we still need God. The same God that we feel has, has hurt us is the same God we need. And so we need to allow God into the broken spaces and the broken places in our hearts. That's why Proverbs 3 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. It doesn't say trust in the Lord with all of your heart if everything everything is going well. No, it doesn't say trust in the Lord with all your heart uh, when days are sunny. No, it says trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
Luke 24 tells the story of two disciples that are walking down the Emmaus Road after, after Jesus was crucified. And they're talking about everything that had happened. And they're hurt. And they're disappointed. And, they, and they're, they're shocked. They don't know what happened. They felt abandoned. And they're walking along so dejected and so depressed that they don't recognize Jesus when he appears alongside them. But I love something that the text says. It says later in that passage in Luke 24, it says he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. Mm -hmm. That verse 32 in that passage says, they said to each other, were not our hearts burning with us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? It was when they had intimate fellowship with Jesus that they could see that he had been with them all the time. The Lord did a work in their hearts and they experienced the power of his presence. Can I tell you something this morning? God wants to give you heartburn. God wants to do a work in your heart, a heart that it is compassionate and passionately in love with the God who loves you. And if you will spend time with God and allow and surrender your heart to God and let God search your heart heart, you'll be able to see that God's been with you all the time. When your heart was broken, the Lord was with you. When your relative died, the Lord was still with you. When you went through that sickness, the Lord was with you. Hmm? We have to allow the power of God's presence to comfort and heal. To love is to let God deal with us, to let God into our intimate spaces and to allow God to heal us. To love God with all our heart is to surrender our hearts. It's to let God search our hearts and transform our lives. And finally, friends, to love God with all of our hearts is to sanctify our hearts. You must sanctify the Lord in your heart. 1 Peter 3.15 says, but in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. To sanctify is to honor. It is to hold in high esteem, to honor as unique and unlike any other, to stand in awe of. It is to, to wonder at the greatness and the awesomeness of who God is and who God is in Jesus Christ and to hold that in the highest position of honor and esteem in our lives, to love, the, to love God the most out of all the persons and all the things in this world. Why is this so important, friends? Because if we're going to love God, even to love God, we need God's help. If we don't have God's help in our lives, we don't even have, have the beginnings of how to love. God even has to teach us what it is to love God because we are naturally egocentric. We are naturally self-absorbed. It is Christ in us who teaches us what it means to love God. Gary Chapman has a book that I really love. It's called The Five Love Languages. And I, I've recommended this book often to couples um, in premarital counseling. And it's just a good book to read in general because it talks about, he talks about the in love phenomenon uh, when couples first get married. You know what that is, the in love phenomenon, when everything is cute, um, you know, when they sneeze and you just love it, right? When, <laughs> when they can do no wrong because you're looking at everything through, through loving rose colored glasses. Well, Gary Chapman says that this war is off after about two years. Amen, somebody. <laughs> and then reality, set, reality sets in. Uh -huh. And that cute snore is not so cute anymore because it's keeping you up all night. Uh -huh. He said it, it is then that we have to choose to love, to learn our mate's love language. Uh -huh. You see, see, friends, I think the same thing is true in our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I think that that we have sometimes over time we, we lose that as the song says we lose that love and feeling we 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 are not as excited and in love with God as as maybe we were when we first came to know the Lord or when we were confirmed or or, or when we recommitted our lives and we were on fire for God or maybe when you first came to St. Paul and you were so excited but then it, it started to get a little bit old to you it started to see the the cracks and the the issues and and, and it and you lost that loving feeling there's nothing to be excited about anymore and worship is an obligation and now you do it not because you want to because oh I have to because if I don't do it it's going to be a problem and so you, you've lost uh, uh, what, what the Lord says to the church at Ephesus you've lost your first love hmm? see that's when you have to choose love I went through a season that I'm to be honest with you I'm really uh, just really re recently coming out of in the past year when I just didn't feel like preaching I didn't want to preach I, I was in a place where if I never preached again I said I'm, I'm okay with that and, and I, it just, preaching was such a chore. It was so difficult. And, and I just, I would even tell God, I really don't want to do this anymore. But the Lord reminded me of something. 
uh, that verse that, that came to me that says, I, uh, you didn't choose me. I chose you. Who? You didn't choose me. I chose you. We love God because God loved us first, right? And he reminded me that I had a call and a claim on my life. And even when I wasn't feeling it, I still had to choose it. See, even if we're not feeling love, we can still choose to love. Mm -hmm. We can choose to learn God's love language. And it's not that God needs anything from us. God's love language is praise. God's love language is prayer. God's love language is serving others. God's love language is giving. As we offer ourselves fully to God, we express love to the God who loved us first. And not because we deserved it but because God's very nature and essence is love. Hmm? 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 See, to love God is to allow God fully into our hearts, to allow God to, to take over, to, to allow God that place of honor and, and privilege of knowing there is no one before the Lord. See, friends, we got to remember our why. We have to remember why we do what we do. Huh? We worship. I, I don't. Hopefully, you don't turn me on just to see if I got on something cute. Amen, somebody, or to see your friends, or or, or come to church when we we're able to to socialize. Hopefully, the reason that you worship is because you love the Lord. Hmm? I, I hopefully the reason that we serve each other and give to each other and honor each other uh, is because we love the Lord. That's our why. We give not because we're obligated to, but because we love the Lord first and foremost, with all that we have and with all that we are. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Let's begin today. God, we thank you so much. We thank you so much for the way you love us. It is without condition, it is spectacular, it is amazing. It goes beyond what we can know, think, feel, or even understand. And you call us into a loving relationship with you. you. You have a claim on us. Your love claims us. You have given us your son as a, a great gift of love. And so God, that great love calls for a response, not out of obligation or, 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 or com, com, being compelled, but just because we love you. So Lord, teach us how to love. Even in troubling times like these, teach us what it means to love, to show your love to a broken and chaotic world. We thank you, God. We love you. We need you in Jesus' name. Hey, if you don't know what it is to experience God's love, you're disconnected and you, you want to know what real love is, I want to invite you uh, into a loving relationship with Jesus Christ. If you want a connection with, with God's people, the people of the one God who are growing and learning what it means day by day to love God with all of our hearts, we want to connect with you. We want to share God's love with you. We'd love to do that. Would you reach out to me, please, at LucretiaFason at Yahoo.com. I'd love to pray for you. I'd love to, to tell you about this Jesus. I'd love to shower you with the love of God. May the Lord bless you, keep you, protect you, and love you. We'll see you next week in our online worship experience. Thanks for joining us today. Remember, we're still sending you love and virtual hugs. See, see you, you next week. week.